They gave us the Motion Plus, the Soundcore Motion Plus. Available in red, blue, and black. And they said, nah, that's not enough. And do you know what they did? They gave us the Soundcore Motion Boom. And we said, wow, listen to that deep bass. I speak of that size. Speaker, that incredibly low price. And do you know what they did? They said, nah, that's not enough. And they said, oh, we're gonna give you the Soundcore Motion Boom. The grown up big brother to the Soundcore Motion Boom. But do you know, sound signature is quite different. And some of us actually prefer the Motion Boom with its deep sounding bass. I mean, there is deep bass there, but what you hear overwhelmingly with the Motion Boom Plus is a thumpy upper bassy sound although the deep bass is there. It's just the overall balance. But we won't get into that because five minutes to tell you that I've got another speaker here and I haven't even told you. And that's why I am the king of waffles. And I don't mean cooking. Do you know what they've done? They said, well, that was like hard plastic and then that was plastic and then that was plastic. And they said, what we're gonna do now? We're gonna give it the old tune ring test. They've made it what appears to be all metal. This is the Soundcore Motion X600. I don't know why they give it a number. I don't like it when they give us numbers. I, I think, give it a character, give it a name. The Motion Plus, the Motion Boom, the Motion Boom Plus, but we've now got the X600. It's a bit like W King. What, why, why the numbers? Why X600? In fact, I think there's been other products with X600. I think it was a phone with X600. You shoot me if I'm wrong. But, well, don't shoot me if I'm wrong. But anyway, the point being, they don't listen to us. They do the market research, I don't know, with their mates and a, and a bloke who lives around the corner. He's got three kids and he just wants to get rid of them off the doorstep. Now, it's not your average speaker. Not least because we know bargains come, depending when you catch the price, the Motion Plus, the Motion Boom, could be any, around 70 to 100 quid. Incredibly, the Motion Boom Plus today in the UK was 120 quid. That's like, that's like, here we are, just take it, just take it. Basically, and I'll slip as 120 quid at the same time. $168 in the US. We've now got what they are wanting you to take in as a hi fi ish credential speaker, all metal, got a nice ring to it, see? It's tuneful, it's tuneful when you hit that metal grill. But, I'm gonna, according to the information I've got, it's gonna retail a recommended retail of $200. You're, you're expecting something incredible for that. Uh, and the early bird price will be £150, $150 is my understanding. But we know, six months down the road, they all come in at incredibly low prices. It was the same with the Motion Boom Plus when it launched. It's got one, two woofers. It's got one, two tweeters, but it's also got a fifth speaker on top, which they say is a full range driver. It's right there. It's firing up and that's the clue. This one features spatial audio. It's not going to space, but it's trying to give you a sense of surrounding you uh, with sound. It's got, so it's got two modes. It's got loads of buttons. We'll quickly get that out of the way then. Power button, Bluetooth button, mode button between spatial and I call it stereo mode, but although there's an extra driver, it's not really, but spatial and then ordinary stereo. The bass button, which up to now has always seemed to be a bass cut with it off, but I'll get to that in a minute. The volume up, volume down, play, pause. It has got, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. I can never get my flap thingy out, but there you go. It's got auxiliary input. It's got an auxiliary input. It's got USB-C charging. It's all metal. So we've got to get into the headlines of this speaker because this is how they're going to market it as a hi-fi speaker. It's got two modes. Well, if it's hi-fi, then just, just give us one tuned mode. It does drive me crazy. Oh, I'll switch bass on, bit bass off, uh, this mode, that mode. Get one perfect mode. But here we are. We've got an extra speaker on top, which is going to give you a sense of, uh, of atmos-like height information or surround you with um, sound, but it also do the old psychoacoustic tricks. So your ears will think it's a bigger sound than it is, but they're doing it via uh, psychoacoustics. So they're saying it's got their proprietary, I think they're saying, uh, processing. And it's got three amps to process that spatial audio. It's doing it into three separate channels. You've got your woofer, your tweeter, your full range driver. They're saying it's a full range driver on top. But here's the thing. Well, what's the point of SBC codec? Well, we go on about, oh, not, not another SBC. Well, we got 
aptics in the original Motion Plus, then they dropped back to SBC, SBC. We've now got LDAC, which is the Sony uh, codec. So I'm wondering if there's some tie in now with Sony. Is it a Sony rebrand? I don't know that. I'm just saying they're going with LDAC. And they also saying high res audio, high res audio, because they've got the auxiliary in, and high res audio wireless. Just to say, the, so in terms of the analog, the auxiliary in, for that high res uh, certification, the drivers have to play, de demonstrate it to play up to 40 kilohertz. Kind of debunk this, it's, it's really about marketing. A lot of high res audio, if, if the track's actually high res audio, and actually recorded that way, a lot of it is actually about, it just gives, it gives it a smoother sound. Actual mics, studio mics, most of them will top out about 20 kilohertz. Your, your, your hearing will top out. We won't get into all that, just know that's not really here or there. Not only in that type of speaker, but all together, how many industries? Hey, do you know what, do you know what the most useful thing about a high-res audio in terms of the analog playing 40 kilohertz is a dog whistle. A dog whistle goes up to about 57 kilohertz. That's probably the most useful thing, but anyway. And then you've got the wireless. High-res audio in terms of wireless is, is it's got to be able to decode, uh, was it 24 bits, 96 kilohertz into the sound that you're actually hearing. So it's about the, the ability to decode that. And in strict terms, it's about anything that goes above and beyond CD quality. CD quality is 16 bit, 44.1 kilohertz. LDAC can do. Nine, now, well, it can top out at 990 kilobits per second, but it's adaptive. So you probably have to be quite close to uh, the source to get that or it will drop back to 660, uh, 330, I think it is. But for it to be high res, it needs to be at nine. So here's the first problem. Well, it's not a problem, but it, for me, it was SBC by default. You have to go into the app to turn on LDAC. Then you have to go into your phone and turn on LDAC. And you have to make sure you've got it set to quality rather than um, the best available, blah, blah, blah. You want it, yes, if it can't do it, to fall back. But if you want high res, you need it to make sure by default it's um, highest audio quality. Let's get on to what we talked about the price. It's a, they're saying it's a 50 watt speaker. You get the normal sound core add ons. So when you go into the app, you will have that nine band um, EQ. It is IPX7, so you can drop it in water for up to 30 minutes in up to one meter of water. It will float, but the downside is. It will not float with the drivers up. Even if you try and turn it around, it will go back down. Oh, how easy in my head is it to add some sort of buoyancy to a speaker that is already can float just to make it float the right way around because then it becomes usable in a pool. Not about protecting it from dropped. It becomes about, you can actually listen to music as you're just lying on, the, on your lilo in the pool. They say it's got 12 hour battery life, but I don't know what the battery is on this because when I got this speaker, there were no specs and there's still very sparse specs available. Let's go straight into what's, what's the promise on paper? What are the frequency response measurements? Stereo configuration in signature EQ, which is default EQ, bass boost off, and spatial mode bass off. Quite a difference there. Spatial looking pretty bright. You can see the upward slant, whereas stereo mode, big roll off in bass, and indeed in the highs, it's quite different. Turn bass boost on, stereo mode, spatial mode. Still, spatial mode gets the biggest bass boost, still has an upward slant, but now that bass mode looks ultra heavy. In signature mode, less of a bass boost, but big roll off in the high end. If we overlay them with bass boost on, you can see the mids are kind of similar, but then the high end, even the upper mids on the spatial mode, it is far brighter, far more extended, and indeed it has way more bass really. With bass boost off, it's still the same story, way more bass on stereo mode, bass on, bass off. That bass boost is a huge, huge boost where you'd want something by the look of it in the middle of the two. You've either got rolled off bass or huge boosted mids bass, but you've also got a big roll off in the highs, spatial mode. You've got the highs, but it looks like it's gonna be on the bright side because of the upward slant. It also is on the bass light side by the looks of it with bass boost off, but the bass boost just looks way overdone. And by the time you've hit 60% volume, 
which for me is kind of normal listening volumes, it's costing you some upper bass. What I found, what I find most surprising or most interesting is the difference between so-called normal stereo mode, even though we've got the extra driver. And by the way, that driver is, is active, no matter which mode, whether it's spatial or if it's say straight stereo mode, you still got that extra, extra four, but it's very, very different tuning. It's in fact, the tuning between stereo, which is quite a dull, well, it's such a, a drop off in the high end and there's such a lack of bass, unless you stick the bass up on and we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, the, it's almost as though it's made to flatter spatial. Just to say, it has a three kilohertz crossover. The woofer seems to play down to 80 hertz up to three, with a peak at 350 hertz. But here, but the thing is, the, the passive radiator appears to be tuned to 60 hertz. There does seem to be a disconnect between the passive radiator tuning and we've seen this before. Uh, to me, it becomes quite obvious it is there is a disconnect. It's quite high that that 8 hertz, 80 hertz drop off is quite high, and then 60 hertz, it's, you know, it's lowish for the passive radiator. So two modes. Let's turn bass off for now and let's have a listen to the difference between spatial and stereo. between spatial and let's call it stereo mode. We're getting lots more dollop in the mid bass at the cost of some upper bass. 50% and over it will start doing that, reducing the upper bass so it can keep hold of the mid bass. So comparing the two, you'll get a bit of a lack of upper bass, but the bass is so much stronger in spatial for no real reason. Um, it's got reduced presence uh, at 46 kilohertz. 8 kilohertz, it's quite that it's quite a lot stronger than the tuning on because it is already rolling off at the high end very early in stereo mode. As I said, it's a dull mode stereo mode, and to me, it all seems to be tuned to flatter the spatial mode. But the good news is spatial mode does work, it does sound open and airy. But the question is, but so here's the thing: when I hit when I hit the bass up button. It doesn't, to me, it's overdriven. You can hear it. It sounds like it's driving the passive radiator rather than, so it's, it's, to me, it's trying to boost the area of where the passive radiator is and the woofer is already well dropped off and it's a really low quality sound. To me, it's a bit like the Flare 2. I like the Flare 2. A lot of people like the Flare 2, but the quality of the bass is not great. And it's the same thing here. So much so for the first time, I'm saying I can't use it with bass up on because it just sounds out of control. I think, now here's the thing, I'm spending all this time um, before it's even gone to market. I did get this early, but apparently I'm, I'm allowed to uh, put it out on the day it's released, which I will be doing. But I'm sure there's gonna be loads of, like with the Motion Boom Plus, loads of EQ tweaking. So for all the work I've done on this, it probably could well be quite a different story when you actually get hold of your speaker. But these are the issue, early issues that I've got. I think it's, I think they're trying to boost the bass in the wrong place. It's hitting the passive radiator rather than the, where the woof is actually still strong and it, and it just sounds like it's waffling it. It's not a nice sound. So I'm gonna have, I've come up with a, I'm saying for me, I have to use it in custom EQ to get something in between the bass boosted sound of the, clearly spatial mode is the one to go to. It's the most balanced of the two modes. But if you hit bass boost, it doesn't sound good, but without bass boost, it is bass light. So here is a comparison to try <laughs> let you hear what I'm trying to say. 
So my comparison is with my custom EQ, and it's a subtle custom EQ. I'm not trying to do anything magic because I know they're going to change it down the road. My custom EQ versus spatial without bass up on and with bass up on. Maybe this is all that I feel. Give it up to you because it's real. You are what I need to succeed because I love the So my custom EQ is just simply trying to reduce everything other than the bass because you can't push that bass uh, without it getting into that really uncontrolled sounding, non-musical sounding uh, bass that it has. So everything else has to come down to give it a relatively more bass heavy sound. And it's not by much, it's basically down, uh, down one decibel. Another issue is it sounds different at all volumes and there's a lot of tinkering you're gonna have to do with the EQ to get it right. Sounds really nice at lower volumes. I'm already giving away what I'm, what's going to be said, but as soon as you start pushing it, it's about 60 percent is about high as you can go. With that, you're really going to have to tweak it for it to sound decent. But it does have the potential to sound really, really decent. Let's have a listen against the uh, motion, the motion plus. I am going to do all these in custom EQ because that's how I've been tweaking them over time. These are speakers that I listen to a lot. The Motion Moon Plus, not that much, but I, I do tweak it. So it's, it's an early comparison. It's go, they're going to change the sound down the road. So I might as well go custom EQ. I think that's the fairest way in this test. And that's, for me, the best way to, to get the most out of this speaker. It's got stronger upper mids. It definitely sounds sharper. It sounds bigger. It sounds more airy. I think it... It sounds nice at the Motion Plus. Remember, it's, <laughs> according to the, to the early prices, it could be twice the price, so it should sound better. It will suit anyone who likes the Motion Plus, which is about having detail, because it lacks any sort of deeper bass, which is the opposite of the other two speakers. So this is not a bass-heavy speaker. Um, and the bass it has, you've got to be careful how you push it. But it, it is airy and it's detailed, and the spatial audio for me, it does work. Um, it does give a nice sense of a, of a larger sound, larger than the speaker itself. Th that driver is active no matter which mode you have, stereo or spatial, but it does very different things. In stereo mode, it's mostly active between three and five kilohertz, but in spatial mode, it's got peaks eight kilohertz, 13 kilohertz, and then 1.1. So it's, it's so different. It makes me wonder if that's deliberate, the way this has been tuned for the two, between the two different modes. So quite similar between the Motion Plus, but I think it sounds nicer than the Motion Plus. I think it will suit the same ears that the Motion Plus suited. Let's try it against the Motion Boom. It's going to be a very different, we know that. It's going to, that's the uh, classic deep bass speaker at this size. Yes, you also tell me about 
Well, I know, I've tested the Mifa wild box, but for me, I prefer the warmer sound of the motion boom. Killing lonely nights with strangers Underneath they go back to our song So I hold on, I, I, oh, I Hurts like lost in the sun Bus cut season, like you're still around Can't unleash you about bass isn't it if you like bass heavy sound if you want to rock out it's got to be the motion boom if you want to have a more relaxed analytical listen it's going to be the motion the, the motion x 600 very very different speakers but again about twice the price of it at the moment of the motion boom yes yeah, big difference in size I think we know the result, but let's have a listen. Motion Boom Plus versus the X600. Can't get a job that pays us enough. I'm about to pop off. Fuck you, you're lost. We all know that we never really want a boss. So I'ma do what I want to. Something I can't undo. Yeah, I'ma do what I want to. Something I can't undo. So playing the same song, all four tracks overlaid, the white line, the Motion Boom Plus way out in front in terms of its upper bass and mid bass slam, the X600 strongest in upper mids, the Motion Plus with its particular EQ setting, it does have more upper bass, Motion Plus yellow line with its custom EQ setting does give it a bit more upper bass, you could address that in the Motion X600 if you want to push the upper bass there. And it has a tad more, not in deep bass, but in lower mid bass, let's say. But the Motion Boom, just behind the Motion Boom Plus in terms of dominating that deep bass. But you can see it's bass light on the X600, even though it's got strong mids, upper mids. You'd want to turn bass boost on, but for me, it doesn't sound good at all with bass boost on. So completely overwhelms the x600 because it's got you know it's incredibly powerful for the weight this this speaker is i always say it when you pick it up it's going to surprise you how light it is you know it's going to look like a much heavier speaker and how loud it goes and what it delivers but it, it doesn't deliver deep bass there is some deep bass but you won't hear it and you'll get a sense of deeper bass from the motion boom but it's a bigger sound obviously a lot of people love this it's not for my particular ears um i found it slightly harsh but better with my custom EQ, but oh, but the difference is going to be what kind of a listen you want. Very, you're not, the same people that buy that are not going to buy that. It's going to be the people who buy that and want something that sounds a bit better. So analytical, a bit bass light, open and airy. A powerhouse, party speaker, go outdoors, take it anywhere, it's light enough. So what is the headroom? We're going to go to 100% volume. And... Because quite often I find default modes on these speakers actually produce the most bass once you go to maximum volume. They are, obviously their tuning is all about hitting the absolute headroom. And once you start fiddling with custom EQ, it's, 
its own limiters will start uh, pushing against you once you go to these volumes. So default modes, I'm saying default mode, it's gonna be the heavy mode for the Motion Plus, which I find is the best mode for maximum volume. And we're going to do the X600 in spatial mode, which is, for me, the only reasonable mode that they seem to have deliberately done that. And we're gonna do it with base up on, base up. Well, it's not actually called base up, it's just called base. But it's got an arrow up, so it could be base up with, a, with that on and off. <laughs> In terms of Motion X600 base boost on versus base boost off, you can see purple line. You do get more from, say, 150 hertz and down, but it's cost you to get that in terms of the upper base and indeed in terms of all over volume. So turning on base boost costs you overall volume and upper base to get a bit more extended into the mid base. In terms of all four motion speakers, it's a landslide win in terms of bass slam and volume for the Boom Plus and these maximum volumes. The motion boom, the original motion boom, is really all about mids. There's kind of the roll off in the highs and in the bass, although you do get some deeper bass. The Motion Plus in heavy mode, you can see it has an upper bass kick, but it doesn't even uh, hit really in the mid bass. So with bass boost on for the Motion X600, it just about can beat the Motion Plus from 100 hertz down, but has more of a high end roll off than the Motion Plus. But none of them are a great listener max of volume, but of the Motion speakers, the Boom Plus goes significantly louder and has a significantly bigger bass punch and indeed the x600 has the least overall volume of all these speakers indeed turning bass boost on on that speaker will reduce the volume even more so it, you know I, I, I mentioned it's going to be different at all volumes and that's, so mine's tuned for about 60 percent which is for me above that is where you can it sounds as though it's overdriven and I, it, it's it's hard on my ears personally but at all volumes you're going to start tinkering with that bass button whether you actually prefer it on or not, and it's gonna be at those louder volumes. So it will fill in some bass, it'll cost you some upper bass, but at louder volumes, you may well want to use that. But all volumes are a bit, are a different enough that no one EQ is going to be able to cover you and everything. In fact, as I sit here now, even though that I've, I showed you earlier my custom EQ, once you start going over 60%, it's it, the coming down by just one decibel isn't enough and coming down like two or three decibels just to fill in that upper bass more as I'm going, well, to fill in the, the mid bass more as I go past 60%. Just bear that in mind. In these early stages, I'm sure that firmware is going to change uh, pretty rapidly uh, and the tuning, as we had with the, the winner, clearly, for, for bass, for muscle, for punch, is the motion boom plus as it, as it should be, given the size differences. But also, it was louder when it first hit the market, but for me it was quite harsh, and I think a lot of other people found it that way. Not everybody, but a lot of people did. And they made it sound more bass heavy by doing what I've just done, reducing the mids and the highs to give them more relative bass, but some people are not happy because it meant they, they lost some volume. It's all about swings and roundabouts at the end of the day. It doesn't even go as loud 
as the Motion Plus, but you could call that screw. None of them sound great, um, but it's going to be that's going to be quite screwy. So it's a bit hard to say. Well, that goes louder because you've also got to be able to listen to it. Um, but surprisingly, given the size, so the actual specs to compare all four Motion Soundcore Motion speakers. As I said, I haven't got all the specs at this point, um, and I haven't opened it up. I haven't even measured the drivers. That handle does come off, by the way, but you're going to have to take this side panel off and there's three screws under that and you can, without affecting the rest of the speaker, lift that uh, handle off and in fact, that's how you take the grill off. But I was starting to damage it and I didn't want to go any further. So, shocker, horror, where are they all made? They're made then. It comes from China, 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 China. We talked about the prices, but just to go, Motion Boom, as I sat here today, Motion Boom in the UK was 120 pounds and that apparently is going to be 150 50 pound, 150 dollars when it come, comes in. And that's the thing. They're asking premium, make it a hi-fi type speaker, and asking premium uh, for the all metal body, body, 168 dollars in the US as I sit here today. Just 67 quid for the Motion Boom, or 87 dollars. And that's gonna be the biggest issue for the X600 because two of the Motion Booms, or indeed two Motion Pluses as I sit here today, 90 quid in the UK, 120 dollars. You've got the option, right, 120 is 240, so maybe the difference is not that much, but in terms of the motion, boom, um, say 90, 180 dollars, and they're saying retail is actually 200 dollars. Two of those, or one of the, you know, I know it's a quite a different sound, but that's gonna be the biggest issue. It's the price of the motion plus and the price of the motion, boom. So don't know about the battery. I told you about the codex. It's got Bluetooth 5.3. You can uh, pair two of them in stereo. As far as I know, there's no party mode. The only one of these with party mode uh, is the Motion Boom Plus. All have the USB-C charging. All have, no they don't. Three of them have an auxiliary input, but the Soundcore Motion Boom, that was a big miss, doesn't have the auxiliary in. The Motion Boom Plus and the Soundcore Motion Boom can be used as a power bank, but the others can't. Can all be used to make phone calls. In terms of headline specs, 80 watts for Boom Plus, 30 watts for Motion Boom, 30 watts for Motion Plus, 50 watts, they're saying, for the X600. The Motion Boom Plus and the X600 will give you 50 w 15 watts of charging, whereas the other two will give you 10 watts of charging. In terms of the weight, it's 2.4 kilos for so-called big boy. The Motion Boom Plus, then we got two kilos just behind for the, well, not two, one, say 1.9 kilos for the X600, 1.5 kilos for the Motion Boom, and just one kilo. I mean, what it does at one kilo, still, for me, um, incredible bang for the buck. They, they've all got IPX7, it's IPX, it's IP67, so it's dust proof, dust proof as well for Motion Boom Plus, and they will all float. They will all float, but none of them will float with the drivers up. Don't know the size of those uh, drivers on the X600. They all have tweeters except the Motion Boom. If only they'd put tweeters in that instead of going for a Motion Boom Plus, it makes you pine for what we might have had. In terms of latency, so the one of the three with auxiliary inputs, not the Motion Boom, well, the other three have got zero latency using the auxiliary in. That's excellent when it comes to streaming YouTube. Got 33 milliseconds, which is incredibly fantastic for the Motion Plus. 83 milliseconds is 83 milliseconds is just where I say acceptable, usable. Might just start to notice lip sync issues on the X600, but it's 120 milliseconds for the Motion Boom Plus, not good, and then just 160 milliseconds for the Motion Boom. For me, that makes it unusable. So that's been early bird review of the uh, X600. Got lots of potential, but it needs tweaking. Uh, almost a waste of having two modes yet again, because one mode is clearly tuned inferior. There's absolutely no reason to have such a, a rapid roll off in the high end on a so-called default stereo mode. It's just, to me, to me that just flatters spatial mode, but hey ho, the good news is spatial mode does sound good. I do like this. I do prefer, for the volumes I'm listening at, this speaker to the Motion Plus, but look at the price. If I actually had to buy it, I might think twice. But now I actually have it. Yes, for analytical listening, I do like the speaker, but it takes a lot of tweaking. Hope you got something out of this early bird review. I hope to see you in the late bird review. Maybe by then it's down to $99, 99 quid, and we're all saying happy days again.
Thank you for watching. What the f*** was that? Ah! Ah! It comes from China. China. My speaker's got deep bass, balanced mids, and a bright high. Yes, mine sounds exactly the same.